Hello everyone, my name is Lebocha Madise, Azure Go to Market Manager, focusing on developer audiences across Africa. And welcome to Mia Dev Radio. With me today is Julia joining me all the way from Kenya. And we will be discussing her journey as someone who started off as a student under the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program to being a Microsoft full-time employee. So Julia, warm welcome to Mia Dev Radio. Thank you so much, Lebo. Happy to be here. Excited for our chat. Awesome. So for our guests who may not have heard about the Microsoft to Learn Student Ambassador Program, do you mind just telling them briefly what their program is all about, as well as um, your journey from you know, the milestones that you carried out between the different tiers of the program to finally becoming a cloud advocate today? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So just thinking about it, it's rather a very long journey, but I'll try and highlight the key milestones. So before that, uh, as you heard, my name is Julia Mujuri, and I'm currently working at Microsoft as a cloud advocate. So my team um, looks after the professional developer audiences. So more specifically, we work with the JavaScript, Java, Python, and c -sharp communities just to enable these developers to build awesome applications on Microsoft Cloud. So I know our conversation today is more on how I landed the role and, more, and not more on what my current role is. So I just kind of take you five years back. So around 2018, that's when I was joining Dedan Kimathi University of Technology to pursue my bachelor's degree in IT. And as I usually mention, is that IT wasn't really my first choice. It wasn't really my first love. I was very passionate about the medical field, but I wasn't able to pursue a career uh, in med. So I kind of just found myself in an IT class with no clue or no understanding of what I did in school. And that went on for a couple of months up until my first encounter with the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program. And back then it was called the Microsoft Student Partners Program. So how that experience was like for me was uh, as I was struggling to just understand more about what the tech space involved, uh, there was a student ambassador from my university who used to organize events at school. And so I decided to join one of these sessions just to kind of know what they do in these events. It was a c -sharp class and I attended a few of those events. And luckily uh, at some point, everything started to make sense. So before I wasn't really understanding what are we learning data structures for, but after joining these additional club activities, it all now started to make sense. And that's when I kind of picked my first very key lesson in tech. And that is if you're really passionate about tech, you just have to have the patience and you need to stick around until it starts to make sense. So I'll pause there and now talk about this Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program. So this is a global program where students who are really passionate about technology and empowering their peers to learn about technology uh, just apply for this program. And once you're in the program, you're given resources that will help you build tech communities in your own campus or in your own country. So you can think of it as a global family of tech enthusiasts who just uh, engage their community in form of organizing tech events or organizing hackathons, building content. So it's, it's definitely a program that I would recommend for any student who's looking to learn and share what they learn with the world. So shortly after, um, I was also challenged to apply for the same program, which I did. And luckily, September 4th, I got an email from the Microsoft team that I had been accepted into the program. 
And for a moment there, I was very, very surprised because I wasn't, I didn't consider myself to be the best when it came to tech, but I was being given an opportunity to learn more and actually teach others. So I took the opportunity. I really uh, enjoyed learning more. And the biggest benefit of the ambassador program is that you're given access to tons of resources. So you're given like 150 USD worth of Azure credits just to play around Azure, build demos, build solutions. And so that was really the start of my journey, learning about technology. So it's a really cool program that I would recommend for anyone to sign up for. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, that's incredibly inspiring. And uh, I love the fact that our journeys are a little bit similar, although I never had an interest in medicine. But that actually made me, you know, like I had an aha moment as you were talking about your journey, right? That you went, your first interest going into varsity was medicine. And then you ended up in a tech class and you were there for a couple of months, not really sure what's happening until you stumbled across, you know, a student ambassador at your campus who introduced you to some of the student uh, programs that Microsoft runs, which started connecting the dots back for you around what you were learning in the classroom. And for students who are listening to this, who either have a love for tech or have a love for medicine or have a love for both, I think now is really the best time to get into tech um, especially because technology is now being applied in every industry, right? So we're seeing technological innovations in the health industry, education industry, agricultural industry, manufacturing and mining. There's, there's no limit, right? So I would actually encourage you to say, hey, if, if you had that seed planted in your heart where you had an interest in medicine, I think now it presents an even better opportunity for you to say, to say the skills that you have today, how can they be applied back into that industry? Because a lot of medical professionals don't have the tech skills, but we're seeing a lot of innovation happening around technology in the health space. So I'm actually wondering or, or a little bit curious if this would be something you are interested in or or you are a purist? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great question, Levo. And um, I would say that that was the very reason why I gave IT a chance. Uh, and I remember it was a statement that my uncle said that, hey, Julia, you've missed a chance to do medicine, which is what you're clearly passionate about. But why don't you consider something like IT, which is very diverse, and after you get into that field, there's a huge likelihood that you would find a way to connect back to your initial passion. So you can do something in the tech field only from a technical perspective. And I, honestly speaking, if, if I had not had that statement, probably I would have ended up doing something totally different. But I only considered IT because I saw that possibility just as you've clearly put it to later on merge it to my initial passion because tech is everywhere these days. Everyone is using some aspect of technology. So um, I'm pretty sure that at some point uh, down my career life, I might try and do something uh, that is medical related, not really leaving the tech space, but to try and have this positive impact from a tech perspective in the field of medicine. So. I always feel it's some it's 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 still a passion I have. It's still something I would want to pursue later on. So yeah, um yeah, I'm quite certain that at some point I will definitely seek opportunities to do something uh in the medical field. Awesome. So back to your journey from student to career. Um yeah. for any of the ambassadors or prospect prospective ambassadors listening to this uh, podcast, what would you say uh, are the th like the attributes that you had that really contributed to, to your success um, as a student ambassador and later on uh, someone who, who 
you know, was potentially an employee of Microsoft, which you are today? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. So um, the, the first thing I can definitely point out is for a program like the Student Ambassador Program, it doesn't really call students who feel like they're the best developers, for example. In this case, if you're just looking to learn something new and you have that open mind that, hey, I might not know all there is to know about coding, but I'm open to learning. That is exactly what that program empowers you and gives you an opportunity to do so. So that was kind of my entry point. I joined the program to learn first before I was able to also um, share that knowledge with my immediate community. And then in terms of attributes, uh, there's the learning mindset, there's the passion for community, which I'm very glad that the role I ended up joining is also one that is very keen on our developer community. So for the ambassador program, the opportunity to actually do stuff for your community, create events, create hackathons, that is a lot similar to what we currently do today. And then something else that I feel is worth mentioning is that my entire experience as a student ambassador is honestly what made me, let me say even 70% qualify for the role that I got in to take. And why do I say that? As an ambassador, I leveraged the opportunities to, to build a very strong network. So remember, this is a global program. So you're literally in the same team's tenant as uh, a program manager at Microsoft or as a cloud advocate, cloud advocate of, at Microsoft. So they are literally just a text away. And if you're not in this program, it's very difficult for you to, that, to have that kind of high level interaction with professionals already in the field. So I took that opportunity to sort of build this strong network. I reached out to mentors. I got my first mentor from Microsoft and through conversations with them, I was able to also volunteer for some of the Microsoft activities. So we have the Microsoft office here in Nairobi, the Microsoft Africa Development Center. And as a student ambassador, I qualified to actually volunteer for some of their own programs and some of their own projects. And that was, that was really, really key for me, uh, being able to work on a project with software engineers while I was still a student. I can say that was like a very valuable um, experience for me. And thinking thinking about it, if I were not a student ambassador, it's likely that I would never even known about the open role that I later on applied after graduating. So again, as a student ambassador, you get invited to opportunities to also network, um, you know, work closely with industry professionals, and then. Yeah, basically after that, I was exposed to the Imagine Cup competition as well, because I remember in 2020, I also happened to participate and our team um, emerged runners up in the EMEA regional finals, which again was a tremendous opportunity for me to also have that visibility. So to an extent where after joining Microsoft, my colleagues would say that, hey, I learned about you from the project you submitted at Imagine Cup. But back then, I didn't really know that such an opportunity would actually resurface once I joined the industry. And after mentorship and after graduating from school and leaving the ambassador program, shortly after I was fortunate uh, enough to get uh, an open role. And just going through the job description, I realized that cloud advocacy is it is a lot more closely related to what we did as student ambassadors. So I felt like this was something I was already doing. So even throughout my interview process, I basically just talked about the work I did as a student ambassador. And yeah, true enough, it's what the team was looking for. And up to date, I enjoy working with current student ambassadors to help them also build their networks and hopefully have success stories to give after as they join either Microsoft or amazing tech organizations once they graduate. Thanks, Julia. Um, listening to you has been really incredible and it actually like connects the dots around a lot of questions students ask on some, how can I be job ready or, or prepare for 
for for a career whilst I'm in university because a lot of careers require experience and you've just hit the nail on the head you know being involved in in student clubs like the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program can actually give you the skills that a prospective employer would require for one so really really well done on that and for those who are listening in and had, have not yet heard about the Imagine Cup. It's one of the flagship competitions that Microsoft has where every student uh, in, in higher education institutions from around the world can uh, participate in teams and present the innovative solution. It could be a software product, it could be an IoT product, and uh, you stand a chance to win really, really amazing prizes. So I know a lot of people also enter their final year projects as part of this competition because those are the projects that one, they already work in teams with, and they also spend a lot of time contributing uh, significant milestones in, in the development of the project. So if you're a student watching this, do visit the website that we have on the screen and check out the Imagine Cup competition. So um, yeah, now on to your the work that you're doing as a cloud advocate. When we met, you were focused quite a lot on the Power Platform suit. So I wanted to just find out for someone who who maybe just thinks cloud advocacy is related to to pure dev only workloads and maybe they're not exposed to advocacy from a low code perspective what what can you share about about that role you know uh, what it meant to be a cloud advocate for the power platform solution uh, yeah that's that's a good question um, so one one thing uh, one thing i would like to mention is that if you're actually thinking that to do something in tech you must have a coding background then that's not the reality that's actually not true there is so much that you can do even coming from a non-technical background we have teams that are built and comprised of non-technical individuals and they actually end up building fully functioning systems to address their business needs so you might be wondering how is that possible? So if you've not heard of low code or Power Platform, um, just a gentle introduction for you is that Power Platform is Microsoft's low code environment. What this means is that for anyone with a non-computer science or non-engineering background who is looking to build some amazing tech solutions to address the immediate problems, there's a way you can do that using a low code environment. So just to paint this picture for you, think of building a whole fully functioning application just by using drag and drop components, or think of building a full report just by using drag and drop uh, fields from an Excel worksheet, if that is where your data is. And we have a tool like Power BI that creates these visuals and helps you gain insights from your data. And you're doing all this without having to learn any programming language. So that's like a gentle introduction to what Pop Platform is. And my experience working, because I think I was in that team for close to seven, seven, eight months, if I'm not wrong, just focusing on our low code um, community. So it was very, it was a very enlightening um, experience because I realized that we have so many individuals who are passionate about tech, but are not in a CS class or are not in an IT class, let's say they're from a medical related course or from law, any other tech, uh, non-tech related uh, course, but they want to also learn how can they use and leverage technology in their fields. So this was like a great opportunity to introduce such individuals to the Power Platform, which would allow them to customize and build tech solutions that they can use in whatever field they're coming from. So one, I wasn't, even sure that the community, the addressable community was that big that would actually find 
uh, like an event with over 100 um, attendees and they're all coming from non-technical background. So that was something that was really, really exciting for me. And then something that I also recently learned was a concept we call fusion, where in as much as we have a whole environment focused and built for individuals with non-technical background, we also have teams that are designed in a way that they bring in the professional developers and the non-professional developers to work together in a team. So what do I mean by this? You may have an organization that has a team which has business experts, which has someone who understands the business aspect of, of the organization, and they are able to build solutions using low code. But in case they need an extended functionality, they also have a professional developer as part of that team to help extend the functionality of the Power Platform, introducing a very, a very interesting concept called Fusion, which I believe we can also share a link to a learning path that you can just read more about what Fusion development is about. So I believe that's how I can summarize my experience as a cloud advocate focusing on low code, that the opportunity there is tremendous. Again, if you feel like you not knowing how to code is a deal breaker for you in tech, uh, just scrap that off your mind. There's definitely a lot that you can do even without having that coding background. 100% Julia. So we will be sharing the link to the learning path in the description of the video, as well as an ebook on getting started with fusion development in the description of the video. So please do check out those resources and start collaborating both with professional developers as well as with citizen developers. So any parting words yeah, that you'd like to share both with early in career um, uh, people as well as with students who are um, either in their second year or third year or even fourth year of study looking to be job ready? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I will start with students because I really love and enjoy working with students. Um, and the one thing I would share is that you need to take advantage of the student status that you currently have, because you will definitely lose that. You won't be a student forever. And there are a lot of benefits that are tied to the student status. So once you lose that, a very clear example is for a program like the Student Ambassador Program. Once you graduate, you're no longer eligible for that. Another example is the Imagine Cup, which again is just a fantastic opportunity. Once you graduate, you are no longer eligible to participate in that. So for students listening to this, my one recommendation is take advantage of the fact that you're a student, go out there, just check out the programs, the benefits, the offers available for you and leverage them. This is kind of the best time for you to build that robust portfolio that you've always wanted to. So if you want to work on a huge project, trust me as a student, you'll have almost free access to all the resources you need to build that solution. But once you graduate, you'd find that to even access like cloud services, you would need to go back to your pocket and pay for these services, uh, which, and sometimes that might be quite costly. So. For the students, this is the best time for you to build that brand for yourself. And then something I also love mentioning is learn publicly. If you learn something today, go ahead and share it. Let the world know that you're actually learning something because the moment you get a chance to interview for a role, uh, whoever will be interviewing you would have a chance to go and just look at how your learning process has been. But if you never share like any of your achievements, any of your learnings online, they would actually worry and be just not really sure if you've actually been learning or if you're passionate about tech. So I think that's what I would share for the student audience and for the early in careers. Um, I'd say just stay curious. That's the one thing, stay curious. Ensure you're up to date with what's going on in the tech world. And the best way to do that is be part of communities. We have so many developer communities out there that you can easily join. Very many um, professionals just willing and ready to share their learnings and their experiences with early in careers. So 
I've personally been, uh, you know, beneficiary of that. We are joining a community and I just learned from someone who has like 20 years experience of what I'm currently doing. So for early in careers, I would definitely recommend take some time, invest time in joining communities, learn from other people's experiences. And again, be curious, just be in the know of what's going on in whatever field you're interested in pursuing. Thank you, Julia. So spot on, spot on, spot on. Um, as you were talking about building in public, I thought this is actually a good opportunity to create an awareness around the GitHub Student Developer Pack. And I will be showcasing the benefits on screen, but this enables students to start, you know, building up a prof professional experiential journey whilst in university, you know? So I'm just gonna show it um, on the screen. Uh, please confirm you can see it on your side. Uh, yep, yep, I can, I can see it now. Awesome. So for those who have not heard about the, the GitHub Student Developer Pack, it's absolutely, absolutely free. Uh, please go to education.github.com um, in order to activate this benefit. All you need is a valid academic email address. So meaning you will sign up with your student email address. It will send you um, an email for you to be able to confirm that you are indeed the owner of that email address. And from there, it will unlock a whole lot of opportunities. And one of those opportunities is uh, you get a virtual event kit. So um, you get access to uh, Microsoft Azure, you get access to Namecheap, so you can publish your own um, uh, domain name if you want. You get access to StreamYard. I mean, Julia just spoke about you know building in public. So if you wanna share in a form of videos, what it is you're building, you'll have access to that. There's also a Discord channel um, with mentors as well as uh, both Microsoft and GitHub staff that will be able to support you. And um, you'll also be eligible to participate in a virtual hackathon, right? Where you, you will get a lot of cloud experience, right? And yeah, so, there's, there's quite a lot that's that's available, but for me, the my favorite favorite benefit is that it offers you GitHub Copilot absolutely free. So any student who has uh, who's a member of the GitHub Student Developer Program, they will have access to uh, GitHub Copilot as well as GitHub Code Spaces and um, you could take part in the program like there's absolutely no limit to what you could do you know you could grow your capability and skills in data science and machine learning it's it's absolutely amazing you know so please have a look at this activate your benefit and get started you know but, but yeah have that professional portfolio whilst you're still a student so Julia, really, really appreciate you joining us today for giving us the key pointers on how one can, um, you know, build their career in tech. And some things that you said also reminded me, you know, even though I've been in the tech industry for quite some time, I think the sharing, but um, over the years, I've sort of tempered down. So this conversation has actually inspired me to share more about the things that I'm learning, you know, the books that I'm reading. I actually have one over here called The Pragmatic Programmer, which I'm currently working through. And yep. um, we can talk about it another day, but I love how it's connecting the dots for me. You know, some of the mistakes that I did as a software engineer, it's helping me self-correct. Some of the learnings that I'm interested in, in doing, it's helping me better refine my path. So, so really, really appreciate your time 
And to any student or anyone in the industry watching this, if you have any questions uh, for Julia, uh, where can they reach you? Where can they get hold of you? Uh, yeah, so on, on Twitter, you can find me at Julia Mujuri4. That's my handle on Twitter as well as GitHub. But on LinkedIn, you can just find me at Julia Mujuri. So happy to take any questions. Happy to have any yeah. other discussions. Yeah, please correct me if I'm wrong. You said your Twitter username as well as GitHub username is Julia Mujuri4. Four. Four. Yeah, number four. Okay, so for everyone who's just tuned in, uh, please connect with with uh, Julia both on GitHub as well as on uh, Twitter using that handle. And if you want to reach out to me, uh, my handle both on Twitter as well as okay. So on <laughs> on GitHub, I use I use a, a different username. So I use at Lebo Madise on Twitter. And I use at Fruitimo on on GitHub. So I'll just present it to you so that you can see it. So yeah, please get in touch with us. Uh, send us any feedback or or what you'd like to learn more. And yeah, that's it for today on Mia Dev Radio. And thank you for joining us, Julia. Yeah, welcome. So I just wanted to nag you for a minute there and uh, sure. and ask what inspired the GitHub name Fruitimo. Ah, interesting. So back in the day, exactly 10 years ago, actually, um, I was introduced to the Windows Phone developer program. And back then, developers actually didn't use their real name to publish apps, you know? So a friend of mine told me, hey, you need to get like a cool pseudonym uh, for publishing your apps. And I had no idea what to come up with, you know? And I thought, what could describe me? So I thought fruits are very dynamic and different. You've got some that are sour, some that are sweet, some that are colorful, some that are just bland. And I thought that would sort of um, describe who I am. And Mo is actually short for Mokhaizi, which is uh, one of my names. So I was named after my dad's sister. So Mokhaizi is like, is like the chief's sister. You know, it, it means advisor. So I figured, okay, if, if I'm to get a pseudo name, let, let it be something that I can identify as, you know, so fruity mo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's where it comes from. So a lot of the apps that I published, I published under that name. Today, it's still my, uh, so all the Microsoft developer programs that I'm part of, that is the, the email alias that I use, but I'm now trying to migrate to just my normal name, which is Lebohan. But for GitHub, I I kept it the same because I opened my GitHub account a long time ago. And unfortunately, if today changing your handle uh, will sort of, uh, like they, they cannot link you back to, if you change your username, your GitHub username, um, and you were tagged in like issues and stuff, I don't think it can connect back to that, right? So I'm still waiting for for the day where GitHub creates a way for someone to have like an alias that is mapped to, so for example, maybe on the front end, people see at level Madisa if that's what I want them to see, but maybe from the back end, it, it can still keep the actual username um, Fruity Mall, you know, just to not lose that uh, mapping. And the same is actually for Twitter. You know, I used to be Fruity Mo on Twitter, and then I changed to my name, Lebo Marise, and I realized all the mm -hmm. tags that were Fruity Mo uh, don't exist. So mm -hmm. what I did was I created another account and put it in in locked mode so that no one ever takes up that that username on my behalf. You know, so I'm just waiting for the day where one can actually map those. Um, and talking about mapping, just one last thing, I know it's oversharing and probably out of scope, 
but what I'm liking about what Blue Sky is now doing from a social media perspective is that you can now use your own domain name to verify yourself, you know? So I, I do, I am the owner of fruitimo.com as well as fruitimo.co.za. So I could go as lebo at fruitimo.co.za or lebohang at fruitimo.com. And that way, you know, it's definitely me because that fruitimo component is there and my real name is there, you know? Uh, so mm -hmm. So that's that's a conversation for another day, but I definitely love uh, where that's going and they are building in public. So I'm also following very closely the work that they are doing and looking to learn how I can contribute into that ecosystem, you know. So, yeah, um, that's my story. <laughs> I really have access to, to Blue Sky. I'm still waiting, so hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll have access to the same soon. Yeah, so if I get a invite code, I'll be sure to share one with you. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julia. Bye. Bye. Bye.